you're familiar with that area, some talk in the last couple of years, we had an Amazon facility going out there in Manhattan, Monet, and Ridgeland. Um, 2016, that development got a permit from Will County, including turn lanes, signals, various roadway improvements for the development. Um, as time has gone on, uh, the area is still being sought after for further development. Moni actually has a development in the works for the northeast corner, which is actually on the map I provided in the, the memo. It's just, just highlighted where it's in the northeast corner. So that development is working through the permit process. They'll be seeking a few variances in the near future, I believe. Um, but, but before we got to that point, um, I had a discussion with the village of Moni because as, as we continue development along there, there'll be more improvements needed on Manhattan Moni. And there's only so much we can do if you're not on the roadway itself. Um, I worked with Dave Wallace, had a conversation with him, village administrator. Uh, very agreeable in looking to the future to try and figure out how we can alleviate some of the problems we see along this roadway. Uh, so when we came to our office last week, and had a discussion on what they're proposing. They're interested in a partnership to move forward with more long-term improvement in that area, basically a five lane is what we're looking for. Um, but to do that, it would be a costly endeavor. I don't know the exact cost, it's still very familiar, so that at least five million. So we need federal dollars for that. So they stop on that, why don't we go for SDP regional dollars, that's surface transportation program. So regional dollars will come up every so many years we could apply for. So if we apply for that, get some federal dollars, we think it's a favorable project to get those. So that would be in 2023, when that application would be. But you can't apply for federal dollars unless you do a phase one study, which actually we'll talk about later when we go to the financial discussion on funding provided you guys. So in order to do that, we need to do a phase one study. There is no federal money for that. So we have to come up to some agreement to actually fund that process. Um, so before my staff and with money getting to the weeds too far in this, we wanted to get the committees um, have some discussion to uh, talk about whether it's something you guys want us to pursue. Because right now we have no money in the TIP allotted for this five-year plan. There's a bunch of projects in the five-year plan we heard a few months ago. But we could look at that plan and probably move some things around. If there's some openings in there, I think we can move around should we want to pursue it. Um, of course, that would depend on how much uh, village and only uh, would be willing to participate. I don't think we've talked about necessary dollars yet, uh, but we will if, you, if the committee chooses to move forward with that. We do have uh, the village that is represented here today. Dave Wallace, the administrator, wasn't able to make it, but Kevin is here. So I might invite Kevin just to talk briefly about the development and their, their desire to join this partnership as well. That would be fine. Okay, go ahead. <coughs> Thank you, uh, members of the committee, for having me here today. Um, as uh, as Jeff said, um, we started looking at the permitting process for this project, and um, noticed that there was that there were challenges. And we're very thankful to have the opportunity to get all the players together last week to put our heads together and see how we might come to a resolution. Um, and then again, thanks for getting this on the agenda today to the project. Um, yes, we would like to enter into some form of a partnership. The proportions and dollar amounts, of course, are going to be relative to the scope of the ultimate project, how far it goes, and how much is village infrastructure, how much is county infrastructure. But at, at any rate, uh, the village is very willing to participate. We view this as a priority project as this is our primary region for growth and it is where it is the hottest for us. And if we don't pay some attention to this challenge, uh, we may stifle our further opportunities. Um, with that being said, we do have uh, a robust new TIF that has been established. Amazon is located within that TIF. And we do believe that we can uh, participate through TIF directly through the increments we preserve or will preserve going forward. And we also have a, a bit of some buy-in from our development partners and landowners in that in that region who also identify the importance of this project. So, you know, we don't really have 
well-defined boundaries of the amounts, um, but everybody wants to wants to play ball, and we'd like to find a way to move it along. Thank you. Anybody else? Sure. So obviously you guys know that's my district out there, and it's right at Moline and Manhattan off the 57. It's on the west side of the road. It is, um, it's always been a congested uh, exit because we have on the east side of the road, we have truck stops. Most of the trucks all go east right now. And so they're all making left turns there. And now Amazon is on the west side, and there's um, this proposed project. Plus north of that on Ridgewood Avenue, there's another facility that's going in. So um, if there's a short distance bet between these things, I'm, um, I'm worried that if we don't do a uh, road improvement there, that we'll have to get a lot of stacking of cars going one way or the other. Um, and so hopefully we can, um, we can move forward with like a partnership. I'm glad that Mooney is looking into this because um, they're, they're obviously the ones promoting this. So it's good that they're looking into it and that is our road. So um, hopefully we can make a plan. Sure. Uh, How long is a, like a phase one study taken? Sure. The phase ones are typically anywhere from a year and a half to two years. So they're a long endeavor and they're not cheap either. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could be a million, a million and a half, depending on how long. It's just, it's just a dollar commitment. Um, that's why if we start in 19 or so, that would put us in place to apply to the SDP regional to come out in 2023, I believe. So we would get that out of the way. So it takes a while, but you got to want their money. You got to play by the rules. Right. <laughs> so you got to make the investment first before you can apply for their dollars. Again, we don't, as Kevin mentioned, we don't exactly know the limits because we're still this. Is, this kind of came up really quick, so we would have to flush those out, start the guidelines, determine a logical term is what to use. So we got to pick specific roads that they would turn. I don't think the interest of Ridgeland or Pasco or Harlem. We're going to try and work through that. So that's what Kevin's kind of insinuating that depending on how long your project is, might be how long the commitment to it is. You know, they're not going to go all the way to Center Road. But that is on our five years, so if they want to help with that, we'll take any money that we should contribute. But, but it is on our 2040 plan to have five million all the way to Center. So this would be a start. This is a county road, correct? Yes, it is. County Highway 6. Are you looking for the recommendations the direction? Well, I guess I'm looking uh, for confirmation that this would be something the board or the committee would be willing to move forward with as far as this partnership, because we don't want to spend a lot of time and efforts trying to figure something out. The not really, if they want to stick with the clip as it is, or willing to have us kind of explore. I want to say yes or no, but at least explore further and try and get something before you. I would never say no to exploring. I mean. <laughs> I mean, I think clearly there's going to be a lot of future development right. in that area, so we should, you know, continue okay. the dialogue with Moni and see where, where it leads. Be proactive instead of yeah. reactive. Yeah. Remind me, when, when Amazon did their uh, building here, did we improve Manhattan Moni Road to the east back to 57? I know there was a bunch of intersection improvements at Richland Avenue improvements. They actually did not. <coughs> From all the way across their property, all the way to 57, made that a continuous three lane cross section. Not additional roadway okay. lanes, but the center lane was there, so it was wide out to that point. Okay. Um, they didn't put a, enough pavement on the south side for a fourth lane. It's not striped out that way. But this, they did quite a bit of widening in two cities. They helped pay for some of that too, right? Uh, they paid for all of it. <coughs> <coughs> they I paid for all of it. So is this new developer willing to get some skin in the game? The guy who's coming down the northeast corner? Uh, yes, and uh, the landowner who presently owns that corner also owns the northwest corner and the southeast corner, so that landowner is also a developer. So it's in their interest as well. So it's just as development goes north and south, they get away from our road and we don't have any way to you know, get any impact. Only up to a point to the north. How far, but only has both sides, both coaches. Good. Okay. So I, I think. Yeah. Anyone object? 
And so what other projects are you struggling with? What's coming off the book? There is a phase one study we have programmed in the end of the program, Larry Road from 45 to the county line. Okay. So there's that phase one, but we have so much backlog from 45 to 52. <coughs> that it makes sense just to let that one sit for a while. So we have to move in there. That's the only project? There is one other we might consider if we need the money. But it's phase one, so. Uh, that one is reconstruction of good now itself. But it's only for, it's in a plan to do just reconstruct in time. Same neighborhood. Same neighborhood. All right, thank you. Okay. So proceed, all right? Very good, we'll try and let the committee know uh, how the discussions uh, mm -hmm. ensue and what happens. Yeah, if you have something to bring back next month, we will, and that'll be a following month. Like I said, this other this development on the corner will have some variances they need uh, to bring forward anyways. So we don't be any next month, so we'll go exactly there, so. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. All right. No so other new business. Under resolutions, the first one is uh, approval of the establishment of altered speed zone. 558 County Board District 7. Second. Second. Moved and second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Two, authorizing approval of professional services agreement for design engineering with Willow Hoffman Associates for Wilmington Township Road District County Board 6. Moved. Second. Moved and second. Questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Director of Transportation Discussion. Jeff, back to you. Yes, um, two associations <coughs> I attend or report to, however the case you might want to call it. <laughs> Illinois Road Builders, Road Transportation Builders Association. That's an association of contractors and engineering firms, quite a large association. They had their um, state, state of the industry meeting last week. They kind of had a presentation. Invited the six county engineers um, to that to present their FY19 program. So in your packet is the presentation I gave last week. It kind of highlights what we will be doing next year at my 19. That's what they're kind of looking for to see what can we expect from various county and state there as well. And the thing was also presented. So I just wanted to let you see what that presentation was. And if there are any questions, just let me know. Um, as far as IACE, that's the Illinois Association of County Engineers. Um, Last week also, I had a meeting with our District 1 engineers. It was a coordinated meeting we had to discuss a number of issues uh, that we have in common. The next week is our fall conference where all the county engineers will um, get together in Peoria to discuss the issues on a statewide um, framework. Um, IDOT will be there giving presentations as well. So just to let you know that if there's any issues that come out of that, I'll let you know if it's usually the status quo, need more money, that kind of thing. <laughs> But that's where we'll, we'll, we'll be next week. So let's just update on those two particular items. Any questions on those? You want to go on to uh, the next item? Yes. Second item, there's a spreadsheet in your packet regarding funding comparisons. Um, uh, over the past several months, even year, We've been a lot of time getting the federal funding for our projects, trying to find more funding sources. Um, kind of what we talked about this morning, trying to find partnerships. Uh, this spreadsheet just takes every project that's in our five-year plan and is organized by the year that they're scheduled to be built, not necessarily designed when they are to be built. So <coughs> there you'll see which projects are federal, federal eligible to begin with. That means the phase one has been done. There's a Y in that column, that means we've got a phase one, one is in the works, we can apply for federal dollars. Not to say we'll get them, but it'll at least be eligible. The next column uh, on phrase study means the project itself is on our four county phrase study. Um, What's only, the number behind the, the That is actually the designation within the phrase plan itself. Ah, okay, that's, that's what I was there. thinking. There's a number of projects in the plan, and those are, that's the number four, if you want to go look it up. Mm -hmm. So we only have a few projects actually in the great plan that we have. Those are highlighted there. Um, then of course the project status is next to it. Um, it's showing you whether, whether it's phase two or phase one. And then the big picture of the next one is the projects 
what federal dollars they have already gotten or received for that project that are allocated for it. So you can see there the percentages as to where that falls, whether that be CMAC dollars or SDP dollars or other projects, other dollars. Those are listed there. Um, at the bottom, <coughs> on the second page, there's projects with potential for additional federal funds. So I've listed some projects there we will be applying for additional dollars, trying to get those dollars. Um, so when those calls come out, that's when we will apply. So there's a possibility uh, for extra federal dollars there. How do um, I know which ones those are? On the bottom, it's listed at the bottom, there's a little asterisk. Oh, the, oh I see, those listed ones right there. Okay, yeah. I understand. And those, those ones are actually already in this plan. Right. We're just trying to get additional federal dollars if we gotcha. have them already. So it's an opportunity to get some more. Um, but I did want to bring your attention to negotiation, condemnation, that column there. On each project, I've listed the number of parcels that we have to acquire for these projects. Mm -hmm. They range from a small amount to a significant amount, 52, 60. Um, and you see next to it, some numbers as far as how many months have been in negotiation and combination. Some of them are a very long time. The bell on 143rd, for instance, going on three, four months. Um, and that's just the court process. We actually should have been building that and we were programmed to build that two years ago, but we're stuck in court, so we can't do it. So I, I guess I'm bringing it to the committee's attention that we need to figure out some way or some other tools, probably from hit these target dates. We need to figure out what to do with right away. Um, I don't think there's much more we can do on our end. The court system is the court system. Maybe with the new courthouse <laughs> go faster. I'm not sure that that's quite the case. Um, but there's there's really nothing we can do on shortening that down. And that just kind of makes our projects lag on. There is the tool of Quick take we've used twice. Um, maybe if the committee or the leadership would want to consider some projects for that in the future, I would be willing to have a discussion regarding that. Um, that's really a policy decision for uh, the electorate. Um, you know, some people are not in favor of it, some are. Everyone gets their day in court whether you do quick take or not, so that's, I would say, um, I would recommend making some projects and continuing that um, move forward. Uh, that letter we wrote on here has 30 parcels. Um, that one could drag on. 80th Avenue itself, we're looking to do, has 37 parcels. Uh, that would take a, it would take a very long time if we get hung up on even one project. So, um, again, I would entertain for leadership uh, to continue a dialogue. Maybe we would move to consider for take on a couple of these. Uh, but if there's something else we can do with the course, that you're not in your head, I don't think there is. <laughs> Well, you know, like you said, the system's not a matter of having a courthouse. I mean, the system is where it is. They get so many days. Litigation, right? But, um, you know, are, are these cases largely handled by outside counsel still? Condemnation cases are, yes. Um, well, I'm just wondering, I mean, do we have a variety of firms that are, are doing this? Are we, you know, are we staffed properly? Are we... Are we the state's attorney's office has one firm they one was the right word, is not dedicated to the appointed secretary of state. That might be uh, as appointed special prosecutor. Um, and um, they have been handle, handling the majority. I just filed one yesterday on an Arsenal Road, uh, Arsenal Manhattan Road. Uh, so we are trying to take some of those into our office. I don't know that it's going to speed it up drastically like. Jeff wants to because, as you indicated, uh, Mr. Volk, the court system is what it is. The uh, serve them with the sun that they have 30 days to respond. If they fight, then they you're going to have a battle of experts over what the value of the property is. This particular one, they are going to fight it to a degree, but we're going to, I believe, reach a settlement and, and get an order on it by the end of the year. That's, that's the plan. That's the hope. But, as I was looking through a number of, of the prior cases that have been filed in the past, um, they have moved fairly quickly, and by that I mean they're often defaults, um, which means within roughly six to 12 months the order is entered vesting title, but it's, it's often going to take that long. Uh, 
um, in order to accomplish it. There isn't a lot that can be done about that process. And in terms of quick take, of course, you're going to need legislative approval from Springfield or whatever particular project you're talking about. So if that is going to happen, then you need to get out ahead of it. So let's say you, uh, project A you're going to do, you want to start working on it. What, you know, what is the deadline you're shooting for? And you're going to have to get uh, out ahead of it in Springfield in order to, to get the legislation passed. So that can be done. Put that on the agenda for next Tuesday. Let's go. I, I'm, just, I'm just trying to be you know, practical and give you a practical time constraints. I understand where Jeff is coming. We're trying, uh, the state's attorney's office, we are uh, trying to alleviate some of those issues. Oftentimes, uh, if you get one project, there's, an, there's only, I think, three or four in, the, in this particular stretch of the uh, Arsenal Manhattan Road, or at least three that I'm aware of right now. Uh, two of them have gone through and negotiated, but you've got the one hold up where you have to file the litigation, so that delays the whole thing. So it only takes one. It seems like we ought to have a much clearer process for how to do this. I mean, if it takes six to nine months, you mentioned, it seems like we should file them all at once on day one. And then the whole thing will be done in six to nine months. Well, there and it doesn't seem like that's what we're doing because this is 33 months, 34 months. It seems like we're doing three or four cases. And when those are out of the way, then we start another three or four. Oh, that should take forever. They do take forever. And that's, we've had projects in, I know in our book, that has been held back. And the public doesn't understand it. Right. <coughs> and we look like we're, you know, being incompetent. But we're, in fact, it's held up in the courts. So I agree with Jack. I think this, I think we should get on this sooner than later. Yeah. We have so much transportation problem in this county, and I think we should just start advertising even and putting it out there that there are people that are holding up our progress just simply by the fact that they, they aren't willing to work with us on the right of way. I mean, this is a talking point that should be on the front page of the paper every day. If we're this many years behind on these roads, and we have the money, and we're ready to go, we, we, yeah. we should be a little bit using our bully pulpit, I guess. Well, it's like when Mr. Yeah. Foreman came in here and, and gave those reports, you remember, a few months ago, and he said that, you know, there's like, for example, I think there were three of them at the time he came in there, and that's all we needed were those three parcels. Right. But until we acquired those three parcels, we're screwed. everything was on hold. Yeah. Right. You know what, the court's important. So the, but they get the court is there to protect some of these people. Just because we want to put a road in, which I think is a great idea, I'm not saying anything bad about getting a road, but sometimes the people are being taken advantage of, at least in their opinion, whether it's true or false. So if we don't have a court to go to court, they get to go court. I'll give you an example. On 143rd Street, we have a, a golf course. And yeah, they're going to take all the I'm just telling you why you need a court. Because they're saying that it's going to cost them more money than the, they're willing, than the county's willing to pay. So we need a court. To do, we need the process. The process is bad. Hold on a minute, Dan. Steve, you know, when it gets to that point, it's, a, it's only a matter of money. There's no doubt that the county is going to acquire the property. It right. just all comes right. down to money, right. Jackie. Right. It's the only issue. Right, and they get their day in court regardless. Even if we go through the court date process, they get to go to court, they get their fair value, what the court deems is fair. Mm -hmm. And so they, no matter what, Steve, they're going to court, they're going to be heard. Right. Well, I'm hearing that everyone's saying, you know, uh, kind of like throw the uh, court system away. No. Well, that's kind of what I'm hearing. No. They said we need to that. file them all at once. Well, no I, mean, one I have no problem filing them all at once. No but when one you're saying, said that. Get the bully pulpit and go after the owners of the land. We're not saying go after them. Jackie, Jackie. I didn't say go after the owners. I said we should take the bully pulpit position and make it known to the community that the reason these projects are not moving forward is because of the process. Yeah, so you're going to blame the landowner who thinks no, that. They, no, I'm not taking on anybody's then? name. Then who are you blaming the with your bully process. pulpit? The process. The whole process as a whole. Yeah. Well, the process How long it takes. It right. does, I'm not saying it should get their day in court. That. I just don't like to hear, you know, when you're saying get rid of the process. That's what I I'm didn't inter say it. That's <laughs> what I'm interpreting okay. from what you said. All right. Okay. All right. Let's, so let's, I think we're all in agreement. Let's let Judy get her hand up. Go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> 
Yeah, I was just, I don't always come to these meetings, but I was just curious. Another thing that would be great to know on here, Jeff, is the number of parcels. Obviously, that's not the number that's in court because you right. reach negotiations. So that would be kind of nice to know that you're out on one or, you know, there are seven parcels, but we're in court for one or two. And um, condemnation does take a good three years. That's how the court process goes. You can't, unless you have quick take, you can't file on everybody at once because you have to go through the proper procedure. You have to give notice. You have to negotiate in good faith. You can't just go ahead and, and, and file a lawsuit against everybody at the same time. That isn't how the process works. If you have quick take, then you can do something like that. But again, you still need to go through and try to still negotiate. Still going to take three years. Right. So it's going to take time. Unfortunately, some people have a, a feeling that they should get more for the property than what we're offering. And I guess one thing to look at, and I don't know that you guys have this, um, is <coughs> what is the cost to the county for us to take up a condemnation lawsuit versus, um, you know, versus maybe offering that person and negotiating up front a little bit more. I, I don't know all those particulars, and I know that there are people who will always find you can never give anybody enough money. I know We've always given the, uh, the department and their negotiators authority. Mm -hmm. Okay, but when it's beyond that, they'll come back here, and if it's unreasonable, then they end up going for it. Right. Typically, that's been the process. Right. Next year, next. Year. Right. And unfortunately, condemnation does take a good three years. It really does. So. Getting away from right away acquisition, which is an issue all in itself, the one thing I think that this document that Jeff is presenting today is a positive step forward is being more focused on federally funded possible projects because as an example this is not a criticism it's just a fact when we went for federal project calls recently we didn't have any projects that were ready that were phase one done and were really attractive or we, we had none basically we, we looked and then one issue I just want to make the committee aware because I heard about it last night was Bridge Street, which is our road, there's criticism all the way around and that Joliet's approved in this project and whatever, and I, I was told secondhand that they're saying, why didn't the county do something? Well, it's on our plan, and we just don't have the money, and we don't have all the pieces in place, but we couldn't chase federal money on that because it wasn't phase one ready. So this is a step forward, but the other thing, I don't know if there's an appetite for this, but a wider discussion of when we're looking at county road projects, using our freight plan, talking to municipalities, and even looking at future land use planning, because that's what our freight study really is calling for, and we're moving forward on the one IDOT study around Larry Road, because like, I'll give a positive example. In, in Judy's district out in Eastern Will County, municipalities and others, we're working together to look at truck routes and future truck routes, and what improvements we can make, and then, then pursue funding for those. But I think we have to look at like I-57, what potential economic developments are along and what road improvements we can make in the state and the municipalities can make. Um, but we have to look at a wider view of this and further out, I think. So that's what Jeff is doing. I think this is a positive thing, is looking out further and saying, we get these phase ones done, which don't aren't done overnight and cost some money, but the risk of spending the money and spending the time makes them eligible for future funding, which could be tens of twenties of millions of dollars because we saw Route 30 to 80 and Plainfield, which we did support, are getting federal money because we've done the preview work. So like I think like Lairway Road and Weber Road and some of these other big corridors that we have, we need to focus now, not five years from now when we want to do them, but now to plan for five years from now because you can see these, a lot of these aren't going to be ready for a couple more years, so we're going to miss any federal or state capital programs if they require phase ones if we don't have all that. And then there's the right of way, which is a separate issue, but anyway. Uh, I think Jake first and then. Uh, just a question Suzanne. about the order, but go ahead, Suzanne. I, I just didn't know what order things go in. Go ahead, Jackie. Um, so there's phase one, phase two, there's right of way acquisition. In what order do these things happen? Sure. I mean, and how long typically do they take? Phase one um, is a year and a half to two years. That's your preliminary environmental studies up front. And then okay. once that is approved through IDOT, you go into design, which is phase two. So that's your construction plans, your tax and legals, 
everything you need to give a contractor a contract. Including right away. And including <coughs> right away. So we can't start right away earlier. You can't, well, no, we can't start. The start is kind of right in the middle of phase two, because we've got to come up with the tax and legals first, which is part of phase two. As soon as we have that, then we get the appraisals, and we get the negotiators going as soon as possible. Now, we usually only get negotiators a couple months, and if people are not really coming anywhere close, we go straight into condemnation. So we send out our 60-day letters pretty much two months after we start negotiating. So we have to do a 60-day letter first before we can even file. So we compress that I mean, probably as much as we can. So that's in the phase two process. And of course, after that is construction. So phase three. Right away is halfway through phase two, and phase Generally, one takes yes. a year and a half. Generally, yes. Uh, Susanna and then John. Really quick, which I'm just going to add. I love what Nick was saying when we were talking about <coughs> grants, when we're dealing with these federal grants, or local for that matter. Uh, this is so instrumental, not only just for the fact that we have that as a forecast of what we're doing, but the one thing I've learned in the years of going down to DC, being legislative chair, is what I would like to see us do a little bit more of when we're doing it, say we have the oh, community. Really? we have a township. Yeah. It's definitely going to work so much better in the process if we go for these grants with these municipalities, with these townships, the state, and everyone else, that we can go ahead and list, that we can get on. And if we can do more of a future forecast with that, when we're going on for these, the best way to describe these shovel-ready projects, I think that would be very instrumental. If we can have that more so of that planning process, with the municipality when we're looking for these for these grants. Because a lot of these, I know like when we were doing, you know, with 55 and I mean, look at the municipalities that that is going to be affected. That really, logistically, is going to take from Joliet to Naperville. Everyone should have been on that grant. And it's the same thing with any of these others. And talking with transportation, US dot, um, of that of the congressman, congresswoman, it all kind of comes back with who else is on this? Let's get that more in the process. So if we can have these conversations or these projects that are touching these municipalities and to be able to get them on, I think the more the merrier. You have that push, this is who it's affecting, and this is why we need it. And when they're looking at it and they're kind of deciding, now they're going, oh, look at this. This is going to affect Bolingbrook. This is going to take Romeoville, Naperville. And we have them listed, and we also have the agencies as well pushing this for us. All right, thank you. Uh, since Nick brought it up, there was a pretty heated discussion last night about the condition of the <coughs> street. That's the state's bridge. We have no responsibility for that. We go from New Lenox Road to the south, and we go from uh, the westbound ramp to the north. Well, Brick Street in totality is ours except for the bridge. So you go all the way up right. to the bridge, including the pavement where the ramps are. The two, the two projects we have in planning right now. The ones we are from planning on the correct. south and from the westbound ramp north. Correct. And the state owns the bridge. And what, do you know what the condition of that bridge is? It's not great, but it is but legal load trucks are still able to go. There are, post, there are pictures posted online this morning of wood cribbing holding up one end of the bridge. Well, you will see that on a lot of the interstate bridges, actually. So 19 out of 100 is not a good bridge? It's one in need of repair, yes. But that is in the IDOS plan <coughs> to replace that bridge in the near term. It's one of their near term projects that they're going to do. It's one of the one quarter. Why do you need it? Yes. It Excel, Excel, and it's yeah. it's one of the bridges that will be replaced. It is. It's just going to take a few more years, I think, before it's in the plan. Right now they're working a little further west because Brick Street is in the near term. We have done some improvements further south on Brick Street. Yes. Yeah. 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 We're working our way up actually. We yeah. From Spencer, from Mills south, and now we're doing from Mills to New Lenox, mm -hmm. hopefully next year. Mm -hmm. And the following year we're going to take, like you mentioned, North Ramps, north to Washington. Are we, are we widening it? Or just replacing It's a replacement of the payment structure. Um, 
My husband believes you should only use concrete. Alrighty. Well, it's been an interesting discussion, Jeff. So you have a lot of good points for me. Um, State Attorney's Office. <coughs> I have nothing. Okay, thank you. Monthly work reports. Brian, Eric, Ray, Jeff, anything, any comments this morning? No? Trying to progress as best we can. Committee members. Steve? I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. I said, do you have anything to report on this morning? No, thank God. All right. Just my little argument with Jack a little while ago. But, uh, all right. That's enough. Anybody else? Suzanne, Annette, Tom? No. John? No. Mark? Jackie? I just don't understand why this process has to take so long. Why haven't we, in this day and age, done something with our legislators uh, to find a fair and equitable way to speed up this process? Because this seems like a year and a half phase one, three years plus for phase two for Judy's conversation, minimum three years for phase two. I mean, by the time we build this road, we're so far past the need that it's not even funny. Well, you know, that, that, is, that is federal. The environmental studies are federal. That is, that I have a question. Phase one, that phase one is. Yeah, but I don't understand why you can't do phase one and phase two concurrently. I, I guess because if the environmental study comes out bad, but wouldn't we on. know, wouldn't well, we have some kind of feeling up front if that was going to happen? I mean, aren't we smart enough to kind of... Well, the other part of phase something? one is not just environmental, it's a public involvement piece. So you got to get the comments from the public to know what their needs are and understand what their perceptions of the thing is before you can start designing what that yeah. is. It just seems like we could do it. Well, then, then speed it up to 18 months. She has the floor. I, I just would think, you know, and again, maybe I'm relying too much on technology, but, you know, with social media and everything that we have at our disposal today, that we couldn't find a way. And again, I go back to what Suzanne's role has been, you know, legislatively, to somehow speed this up a little bit. That's all. I, I get given people due process and opportunity to respond and all of that, but. You mean the quick take part, but why the legislators, why that part takes so long? I think the whole first thing. Off, first off, you go, when you're down in Springfield and you even say the word quick take, they, they run. run. They run. They run. They don't want it. I, I think our first order of business is to change the name, to be right. honest. Because right. um, it's not really quick take. There's nothing quick There's about it. There's nothing this. quick about it. So I've always thought that since day one. But it really, you need to, it's not something of saying, hey, look, you know, it's not like, Hassert and Courier down in Springfield going, hey, look, we have this quick take. We need you. And they go, okay, we're in. You legit have to go get into committee and explain why Will County is needing this. Like, you uh, have to show up uh, and go through that whole process because it is not an easy sale. Yeah. Because they don't want to do it. They, a lot because, like Judy said, or kind of like what, you know, um, that what you say, you know, of that, of the people of going, hey, they, they want to have their say. So when people hear quick take, they automatically think negative, which it's it's always, you know, it's easement, it's very small, it just becomes, it's a process. It's more of a procedural, not a name. So I do, I'll put it aside, I really do think that name needs to be changed. Yeah. Because it's not quick about it, it just sounds rude. I was under the impression that there's new laws that went into effect that uh, the Trump administration Put out where you should be able to build a road in 18 months, not seven years. And I don't know that that's only for federal, or does that go into the county where we need to change ourselves to correspond with the federal laws? Because I don't think it's a, a bunch of baloney when Mike was told that when he was in Washington, what, two weeks ago or three weeks ago? And every time you watch the uh, news, there's something about government regulations getting cut, and that's one of the things that happens, that you, you, you plan a road in 2002 and it's built in 2008 <coughs> because of all the different studies and all the different things you got to do, and that's been eliminated. As far as I know, I'm not, a, I'm not you, so I'm not reading every statute, but if that's the case, maybe we need to look at our rules. What, why is it taking us so long? Are we adapting with the feds on? 
or is the feds go down to us? I don't know the answer. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure which legislation you might be saying that was. I'm not sure what, the way because all, which all the requirements are still there. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're all still there at the moment. Yeah. Maybe it takes time to work its way through the system, but it's still there. It's, it's, all the requirements are still there. Yeah, I was just going to say the reason why the process can't go any faster, Jackie, is if you don't do the phase one study properly and all the, and every study gets done to, uh, exact, you're going to end up losing in court because there will be people that will fight it. Environmental groups will get on board and they will win. Because part of that happened with the Eliana toll road because the process was on that fast track and the things were not done the proper way that they should have been done. So if you don't take the time and do it up front, and it is the right of the people to be able to have their say, because otherwise government would just run over everybody. So we can't just do things because we might want to do things. We have to do things in the proper manner, which has been set, and that's the process that, that I know that Jeff follows. So that is just how it goes. My frustration is they're worried about the government running over them. They're running over each other. The crashes, the wrecks, the deaths, the uncounted amount of you know injuries and the costs medically and insurance wise, you know, at some point cases, there's got to be a better way. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Anyone else? Um, public comment. Anyone from the public wish to address the committee? Anyone? No one. No reports, question though. Um, Jeff, we had uh, a speaker at the last county board meeting regarding 95th Street. Has yeah. there been any more communication since the meeting with Naperville? No, there's not. Okay. Um, they haven't reached out to you since then? Wait, is this going to be an ongoing thing? I thought it was. No, I was, just, I was just asking if that was. You know, if there was a response from Maplewood or all right. Because I'm sure we all received emails. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Executive session. I need to enter executive session. Okay. Online to adjourn. So motion. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.